Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University, and in this video I'm going to give you a brief introduction to sigmatropic rearrangements. One example of a sigmatropic rearrangement is this reaction, which admittedly looks like there's uh, nothing more I'm doing here than flipping the uh, and flipping the ring around. Actually, I want to switch and draw an equilibrium arrow in between these two. Right. But the reality is, is, if I could somehow label these carbon atoms either with numbers or something, let's pick numbers. If I could label these carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then what has happened in this reaction is a rearrangement of the single and double bonds. And a, and a connection of carbon atoms 1 and 6, and a, and a breaking of the bond between carbon atoms uh, 3 and 4. And this particular uh, sigmatropic rearrangement is the COPE rearrangement. Uh, and I'll spend some more time on that in another video, but I'm going to draw its mechanism right now. Like all paracyclic reactions, it has a cyclic mechanism that you can draw either... Um, in a clockwise fashion or a counterclockwise fashion. I'm going to end up drawing it again here. Clockwise, or the, that's the clockwise version up there. Here's the counterclockwise version. And then I'm going to draw for you the transition state. If my software will let me. Here we go. And as a reminder, in drawings like this, all of the dashed bonds are uh, bonds that are partially formed or partially broken. We're on our way from the reactant to the product. Ooh. And then I'm going to use this example to do one other thing, and that's to, to describe how it is that we name uh, sigmatropic rearrangements. So this is a 3-3 rearrangement. And the reason why it's a 3-3 rearrangement is because there are three atoms in each fragment that are being... Uh, that are, that are, you know, kind of swapping positions. So there's one, two, three, one, two, three. And this three, three uh, kind of nomenclature is going to be uh, used to describe other kinds of, of rearrangements. And it's worth noting that this three, three kind of rearrangement is a really common rearrangement. Um, there are other kinds of rearrangements. So you could have a here is an interesting rearrangement involving uh, a hydrogen atom. Let's see, actually, I have my double bonds in the wrong place. Here we go. Here is a rearrangement that really is just the movement of a hydrogen from one end of the chain to the other. But it has a cyclic transition state, and it's concerted, so <clears throat> it is a paracyclic reaction. Transition state looks a little different here because it, the location of the single bonds and double bonds are different. This is a 
one five rearrangement is one of the piece uh, one of the pieces has one atom, the hydrogen, and there has five, the the cyclohexane ring. Or not the cyclohexane ring, but the all but the all carbon piece has five. Hydrogen double bond, double bond. And each of these kinds of rearrangements is going to get its own video. So I'll do a hydrogen rearrangement, a hydride transfer rearrangement. We'll do a 3-3 a, a three, three rearrangement video. But I also wanted to share with you that there is a type of rearrangement that is, in fact, a sigmatropic rearrangement. And you are probably very familiar with them. And that's the carbocation rearrangement. You know, you learned, probably learned about carbocation rearrangements before this topic came up in your study of organic chemistry. And when you learned about carbocation rearrangements, you learned that, you know, in this case, a hydrogen atom is likely to move from one position to another. So there's, there's a hydrogen atom already here. to form the more stable tertiary carbocation. But what you didn't learn at that time is that this is actually a pericyclic reaction. It's a sigmatropic rearrangement, and there's a cyclic transition state for a lot of these carbocation rearrangements. And there's a hydrogen atom on its way from one position to the other. Here's our, our cyclic intermediate. Okay. And uh, I don't know, I'm going to put the positive charge here. The positive charge is actually somewhere in, in the space uh, occupied by that transition state. The hydride transfer, the hydride shift, the methyl shift, other kinds of carbocation rearrangements are also uh, sigmatropic rearrangements. In the upcoming videos, we'll explore more about each of these kinds of rearrangements. Thank you for watching.